Good morning. This is the Amherst Conservation Commission's Subcommittee on Land Use Policy. And we have all members present, myself, Alex Orr, Michelle Lobb, Bruce Stedman, and Aaron Jacques, Amherst staff, and will be later joined, we hope, by Dave Somak. So on our agenda today, we're going to go through hopefully what might be a last draft of the agricultural policy document, and we'll address some questions which Bruce has brought up. Yes, Erin. <clears throat> Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but um, we had on the agenda to talk about the general rules and regulations. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I just feel like we've gone through the agricultural document so many times at this point that... We, and we've only got three more meetings before the end of the month. So I was hoping that we could move on to some other sections. Um, I realize there's some unanswered questions with agriculture, but I'm hoping that we might, staff might be able to help Bruce with that. Well, the only questions were that Alex reframed the beginning. As you see the things in yellow is his reframing of what is a goal? What are the objectives? So my suggestion about that is that each of us send me any comments you have offline about his reframing and any other thing that you see now. And let's just put it as a comment or as a note and let the commission grapple with it as a whole. I, I'm fine with, in concept with what he said, but just agree with Aaron, we should try to take on at least the, the introduction and the rules and regulations part of the broader meeting um, document. With all due respect to Aaron, there isn't that much in the document to bring it up. And the shifts that I asked for um, are pretty plain. And I think we can get through it pretty quickly and then move on. Okay, I don't have the revisions that you sent Bruce, but if Bruce wants I to share those. I sent it to everyone this after this morning. But oh, I, I thought the, the version you sent at 7.30 includes yes. Alex's edits? Oh, okay. Correct. <clears throat> okay. But I can put it up if you want. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Bruce, while we're at it, there's a spelling mistake on page five, license, the word license. It should show oh. the red. I'll pick it up. Yeah, and on page six, there's parentheses followed by eek, eg, okay. and you'll see a comment about that. That's All right. they're just I figured we're getting there. So okay, what we have in front of us in yellow um, moves the wording for goal, objectives, and strategies around so that we can actually know if we've achieved them. And I, what I did is I, as I said in my comment, I followed Fish and Wildlife Service rules for uh, planning refuges. And they went through a lot of work on what's a goal and what's an objective and a strategy. So I followed their rules. And I think what I came up with was a goal statement, which is appropriate but not measurable and goals aren't measurable. They're a stated condition followed by objectives, so on and so forth. And objectives are what are measurable and what people, the strategies is what we do to achieve the, the objectives. What we didn't do is go through tasks, which was what people actually do. I had did have a question on being transparent and number eight, number, eight, number nine, I don't know how we, I don't know what they mean. And so maybe you could comment to Bruce on that and we could straighten it out and then it goes to the larger committee. But my comment stands, I don't, I don't know what they, I don't know when we know we've done that. <clears throat> uh, the only other thing I would add is I put in number six as a way of pointing to the fact that there will need to be a management plan. Yeah. And then I added a comment today, I think, uh, further down where it starts to talk about the preferences. Um, I think we should have a form in this document um, rather than asking somebody in the future to make up a form where it says we're going to rank people by the how their proposal addresses the purposes. 
identified for agricultural land. And I think it would be appropriate to actually have a ranking form, which could be changed in the future by vote of the commission. I like that idea, just at least columns with some kind of topic where they add text or check yes or no or something like that. Yeah, or it's a point. If you're a resident, you get 10 points. And I made a comment, Bruce, about that ranking system. Right now it's set up for residents, but it doesn't address if we only have non-resident right. applicants. Okay, um, I will make a draft of the ranking form, send it around and get comments on it. Yeah. Aaron, what is the deadline for doing all these fixes so that you can put this section in a meeting, a full meeting uh, agenda? Well, it's a great question, Bruce. This this committee is kind of set to expire at the end of June. So I think on June 26th, we're going to have to talk to the commission and kind of let them know where we're at in terms of um, achieving the, um, you know, all the items in our charge and basically say, is more time needed or have we sort of pretty well accomplished all of these these items and if that's the case then there might be some staff input or like final legal review that's needed um so i think after june i don't think it really matters i think we can take our time with the conservation commission there's no deadline per se at that point for the commission to review sections what's the answer to his question well when one thing that strikes me is we should probably at least demonstrate we've done one big part by showing them the agricultural section on the 26th. Yeah, we have. I'm not sure, Aaron, that you answered his question. How much time do you need before you can present something? Do you have to have an agenda? You got to put it in the paper, all that kind of stuff. So, the answer is it depends. Um, it depends sort of where we're at at the end of June, because we might need legal review of some of the document before we take it to the commission and or we might take it to the commission before we do a legal review. But the bottom line is like for the rules and regulations, which is just a section of this document that requires a, um, a, a legal a public hearing. So we would need to do a legal ad for that specific section. So some of the other sections don't require that um, sort of advanced notice, but I guess, and it also depends how this subcommittee would like to present this. Like, are we going to do it piecemeal or are we going to try to complete, you know, all of the sections in the document first or? Yeah, these, we've discussed a lot of this. We said we were going to give it to them piecemeal. Mm -hmm. I don't know, we haven't discussed as we come up on the end of June, but I, my expectation is we're gonna ask them to extend it for a couple of months. Okay. So, um, but it would be nice to give them something at our next meeting, like this document, like forestry. I still have questions on, on community gardens. Um, I don't wanna talk about community gardens now. I could talk to you about it offline but the draft you gave me points to the website. All, um, I don't want to waste time on it in this right now. I'd rather get through this document that's on the screen. But I think what I thought what Bruce asked was a pretty simple question, like get it to me by next Tuesday. Well, it's really up to, so Michelle is the chair of the Conservation Commission. She's the one who sets the agendas. So I'm not going to make a problem. I have a solution to this. I'll give it to you by tomorrow, and then you can decide what to do with it after that. Okay. I, I think it really depends on the business on the 26th, if we have adequate time to review this. Sometimes, like, in previous um conservation commissions we've set a special meeting to review these so that it's not like on a normal meeting night where we have hearings we might hold a special meeting where we review it um we have previously reviewed the whole document and given commissioners the opportunity to review the whole document and comment on it so it's a little bit different of a format but um i th i think we we need to discuss a little more how to handle it okay I i'm still going to give it to you by tomorrow okay <laughs> so that um, I, I 
I'm sorry. I just have an, a <clears throat> pile of other things I should be doing, and I want to finish one thing. Michelle? Um, I would like to suggest that if Bruce gets it to us tomorrow or not, generally soon, I could just introduce that it's on the horizon at our meeting on Wednesday. And I like the idea of piecemeal, it, it, at least for this section, because it lends well to a piecemeal review. I think when we've given the whole document to commissioners, it's a bit overwhelming and generally they don't have time to pay adequate attention to the whole thing. And we haven't really gotten buy-in from everybody. So if we introduce it and then when it's ready, we can give it to people and give them like, you know, two to three weeks to review it and they can send comments back or whatever. But um, I like biting off a little bit of the of a time for appropriate sections. Yeah, I agree. And so you could put on the agenda report from the subcommittee and I could bring it up and just tell them it's for their review and not spend time discussing it. And just like Michelle said, and I, that is the process, Aaron, that we've talked about all through this. Giving it to them in pieces. Yeah, but if something needs specific legal review beforehand, we'll have to consider it case by case. But ag is a good one to just, I think, start with, get something off our plate, show them we've done something, et cetera. So it sounds like we can put it on the agenda for the 26th, get it out to them. Sure. And then at least we have something reported back before we're officially expire. And in the same breath, I would ask for an extension of the of our existence so that we could button up the other stuff. I agree with Alex on that. When is the appropriate time to ask for the extension, Aaron? Would it be before we need it or yeah? So yeah, maybe the 26th. The yeah. 20th? Okay. I um, mean, I think we should get as far as we can and provide them with an update at that meeting on the 26th that says these are the sections that are near complete or that we're going to be presenting piecemeal to you in the next few months, but these sections need some additional time and we'd like to, you know, request an extension of three months or six months or whatever you think is necessary no okay but um i don't really i mean i don't know what your agenda looks like for the next meeting but rather than spending 20 minutes maybe we could just do it in five and not list everything we need to do but just say there are several sections that are near completion and we need some time to button them up and be and not go into detail. Otherwise, there's a whole discussion. And as for as the commission to move on that. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll defer to to you guys as far as you know how how you want to handle it with the overall commission. Um, it might be good for us to be prepared in advance of that meeting just to say kind of what the ask is going to be in terms of time extension and um they get six months yeah we we certainly need six months i mean i'm going to miss some meetings this summer so certainly six months I'm just shoot for that if we get done earlier great okay so back to this ag document i have a comment on what i just sent you bruce we say that we're going to um uh in the objectives is where is the phrase no it's in the strategies develop a list of key purposes i can't find a list of key purposes in the document maybe i missed it or it's called something else but i don't know where the key purposes are and it seems that they should be in this document Where's the reference to key purposes? Strategies number one, page one. So uh, I don't, I, where did this language for key purposes come from? I mean, that, that wasn't something that was in the original. Comes from uh, the gold statement. Selected conservation land is in production, productive agriculture in keeping with key purposes. Uh, it sounds like it's missing some context. Hi, Dave. Um, maybe of the Conservation Commission or key purposes of the Conservation 
uh, values of land. Something got chopped, I think. Well, is this referring back to our mission statement? I mean, I it seems so. No, but... pur purposes for ag land. Oh, okay. What do we want to achieve by having ag land? So that language key purposes was in this document when we started drafting it as a committee. That wasn't something that was added in. I'm just wondering. Yeah, the... But when, when I wrote the goal statement, I, I took out or I formed it around what was previously there, but we've talked oh. about why I have agriculture. Okay, I will go back in the various um, versions and try to find it. If I don't find it, I'm going to drop it and just say selected. The goal is selected conservation lands in productive agriculture. If I find the purposes, I'll I'll leave it in. But if I don't, I'm going to take it out. Okay. Okay. Hmm. And Dave, while you were gone, we said it was the suggestion was made that we actually develop a form for ranking applicants if we have more than one and put it in the appendix. And Bruce is going to take a shot at it. So it would be like if you're a resident, you get 10 points. If you're an indigenous person and a resident, you get another 10 points. That kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And put it in the put it in the appendix so that we don't have somebody in the future who may think differently than us doing up the form. That's all I had. I'm done with this document. If anybody has any other questions, we can move on. Mm -hmm. So do we want to move to the rules and regs section? Sure. Well, if, are they going to come up on the 26th? Or we're, just, we're just going to give them the ag section. I think we discussed the ag section only. Yeah, I mean, I think that the intent of these three June meetings were for us to try to um, touch on the um remaining items in the charge that we hadn't circled back to in a while or hadn't talked about um so that's why you know the suggestion was made to get those on these agendas um i know we already talked about rules and regulations so i don't know um you know well maybe we can cover them if we don't do it in this hour we could cover them in an extended period but Bruce has some questions out there, which maybe he needs answered in order to produce the document for you tomorrow. No, I don't. They were they were other kinds of questions about land use generally. Okay. So Dave, Dave answered them. So I, I and I don't know how much any of them really go into the document or not. They're pretty fine grained. A lot of them. Okay. Um, <laughs> One was about encroachment. One was about um, visit uh, when we check in at the conservation lands. One one is about high risk sites. One was about I think winter time seasonal use, and one was about a formal grass cut grassland cutting schedule. Those yeah. are the five topics. Are we discussing them? I'm just, I'm wondering how to help deal with the answers Dave gave. It, it feels like we could find a place within the document to indicate what he said is the way the town manages it. Um, I don't know how much conversation is needed. Well, I had some comment on the, the grassland cutting okay. when, did did Bruce did you say 
I didn't hear you. Did you say how to deal with Dave or how to deal with Dave's oh, responses? How to take Dave's responses and incorporate them into the document, assuming that they are what the town does. Um, not sure. trying to change what the town does. I'm happy to whatever whatever cool. you want to do, Alex, here, if you want to go into these. Or Michelle said she had a question or comments about rotational mowing. Yeah, you got a question, Michelle? Yeah, I mean, mine's sort of at the bottom of the list. Um, I, I was curious. I can't really see that, so I'm looking for the. the I'm email. looking at what I wrote. Yeah, it was a while ago. These were quick answers, by the way. Sometimes the best answers. I mean, I'm curious about the high risk sites and sort of why they're high risk and. Can you make um, it bigger, Aaron. I did make it a lot bigger. Did you guys see that I made it bigger or oh, is it not? Now it's been lost. Yeah, I, I stopped sharing and reshared. 150. Try 150. That's perfect. Right it's it's very good on my screen. It's at, Try 200. It's at, it's at <laughs> 150 now. Um, yeah, there you go. Now. That's good. Perfect. <laughs> okay. I can't see if you guys could tell that it changed or if it just stayed stuck on the other screen. Okay. It looks great. Aaron, thank you. So what was your question, Michelle, about high risk areas? Oh, so, yeah, I'm just interested to hear more about that. Like what is the what are the issues? And so. Yeah. So I think real quick, um, right out of the gate, I think it's important to note that we haven't done extensive kind of ecological inventories of all of our conservation land. It's an aspirational goal. It would be wonderful if we did do it. Um, it's a big project. We should undertake some level of, of, of analysis in that way. So notwithstanding that, um, the high risk species, obviously, you know, the suite of grassland birds, you know, we, we typically, you know, put everything off, all mowing off until after July 15th. What I said here is realistically, given all the summer projects, given, given equipment problems, et cetera, et cetera, we often don't actually get out onto fields mowing until August, September, October. The areas we try to avoid are mostly areas that we know there's terrestrial turtles, Michelle, either box turtles or wood turtles. Now, so that's generally, so it's grassland birds, and um, terrestrial turtles are the areas that we try to manage around and time our cutting. Okay, so so back to that question about identifying high risk sites. You high risk is defined as sensitive species in. Yes. Here? Okay. Yes. Okay. I was. And that's basic. That. Yeah, that's basically you know. Um, that's basically that's based on you know um, what we know from natural heritage and our own sightings, but again you know um, mowing the trails at Wentworth Farm, one of our largest conservation areas, we mow the trails all year long at Wentworth Farm. Clearly, much of Wentworth Farm is uh, wood turtle habitat, so you know. There's a balance here, right? If you want trails at Wentworth Farm or or uh, Sweet Alice, and you want those trails kept open for people, you mow them during the summer, and you do the best you can. Um, knock on wood, you know. I am not aware that we have ever hit a terrestrial turtle, but sometimes you may not know that, but. Um, we have we have no evidence that we have ever hit a terrestrial turtle on the trails we mow, um, so that's kind of the, the the fine balancing act we we play here. But places like you know um, places like Atkins Flats, um, um, Haskins Meadow, where we know we have wood turtle habitat and box turtle habitat, um, you know we try to put off. In some years, we're mowing into, we've mowed in December and January before, given the uncertainty of weather patterns and climate change. 
we're now mowing in a cab in a mower in in December, even January sometimes. So um for the sites like Wentworth, is is there like an MOU or something with natural heritage for the mowing or that you don't yeah. need to do that? No, and I I would be really hesitant to even open that door. I mean, <laughs> you know, we've owned some of these areas for 40, 50 years and been doing almost the exact same thing for 40 or 50 years. I'm not saying that's good, bad, or indifferent, but you open that door with natural heritage and all of a sudden you are being regulated at a at a level that is beyond what you know, I'm not aware of any communities that kind of reach out to natural heritage and say, hey, come and regulate us on how we mow our trails or manage our trails. It's, you know, we use the best science and the best practices that we have. I'd like to have more science to do that, to base those decisions on. So, you know, this is part of, a, I don't want to go on too long, but I think this is part of the conversation about what fields do we continue to keep in early successional habitat and which fields do we not? Yeah. You know, um, Askins Meadow is a great example, Michelle, up on East Leverett Road. Um, we may have box turtle habitat and wood turtle habitat up there, but do we keep that field between East Leverett Road and Cushman Brook open, early successional habitat or not? You know, I would advocate there's there's some reasons to do that, but that should be a really late season mowing after the first frost, you know, so we work that into our management practices. Does that make sense? That's one example. Yeah, and just to note, um, Wentworth and Hatskin Flats came up as a high turtle priority habitat. So I just, before I forget, like that might have some implications for ag. Um, just anyway, I just wanted to note mm. that. Um, but there's a field, Gulliver Meadow, which is a small field, couple acres off of uh, Strong Street, which we've got, I just inherited the, 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 the management there from my predecessor. You know, I would, I would guess, I would advocate that that is a field that really does not need to continue to be mowed. It's adjacent to the um, Wildwood Conservation Area, Wildwood Cemetery, and everything north of Strong Street. What's the rationale for keeping that small little field open? I'm not sure there is one. I think the neighbors like it. That's probably why my predecessor did it. And it used to be an ag field, right? They all did. Anyway, I don't wanna go on and on. More science is would be helpful and it would help us make decisions, but I think we can make a lot of those decisions out of, on grassland birds and terrestrial turtles. Yeah, Bruce. I just would ask that if if it doesn't currently exist, that we work towards having a manual, at least a spreadsheet that documents the things that they've just described, so they're not all in his head. Mm -hmm. Michelle. Yeah, what Bruce just said was something that like originally I was envisioning for this subcommittee was to come up with something like that so we could start ranking and prioritizing the sites. And when we're talking about the mowing schedule, like sort of develop that further. Um, and for that, I just wanted to jump in with the mowing schedule. So I'm going to strongly advocate that we move that July 15th date back Um July 15th still corresponds with like second broods and also with post fledging birds. So there's definitely the potential for some mortality, especially if you're brush hogging the edges where the birds tend to store, you know, stow their young away when they, before they can fly and forage on their own. So I think late August is safe. And, but July 15th, that that's like when all the baby birds are just out and it's really hard to know that because all the birds are very quiet and secretive, but it's really a very, very um, sensitive time of like, you know, a third of mortality for birds happens then. And most of it is just post-fledging mortality. So supporting throughout the life cycle of these birds, I think is important. And that could just easily be addressed by 
bumping that forward a month or back, yeah. whatever. Yeah. And the reality, yeah, as I said, the reality is happy to do that. The reality is we rarely get there because there's too many other priorities. Um, Dave, um, how often does a field have to get mowed in order to keep it in early succession? Is it yearly, annually, every other year? How often? I think, again, I think that depends on what is there. What what's what's the underlying ecology of that field? You know, is it? And I use the word field. That's not a really scientific term. I mean, is this? Is this multi, mostly multiflora rows, you know, full of an invasive, full of invasive fields, or is it, is it something, um, you know, where there's a, a, a monoculture of a certain grass, like at, um, say, Atkins Flats? Um, so it it really depends, Alex. Um, and again, some fields we've we've not gotten to for three to five years. Um, and you get a tremendous number of invasives and, you know, we've, we've never done, we've never had the funds or the staffing to really do like field restoration, you know, uh, doing, doing a planned, um, restoration of a field with a targeted species or suite of species in, in you know, in mind, we've done some, um, prescribed burns at Atkins Flats before working with the state and federal government. And those have been very, you know, successful over the years. I also neglected to say, you know, we so often focus on the suite of birds, but, you know, what we, what we don't focus on a lot is the insects and butterflies and moths. And, you know, we do have, a, you know, a number of areas that are high density of milkweed and other species of plants that are important to moths and butterflies and pollinators and you know again more information more inventory work on those and then targeting those areas with specific management would make all the sense in the world it's just time and resources to do that thank you i was just wondering how big a woody stem the brush hog can handle so in oh pretty pretty big you yes. know, an inch, so, two, three, no problem. Oh, so one of the ways to keep down mortality is to infrequently mow. And, and seasonal. Michelle? Yeah, I just wanted to follow up on what Dave said about the insects. Yeah, absolutely. And it's sort of even, like I think about Askins Flats and Haskins Meadow, which has like uh, late season asters and things that provide uh, a nectary source for migrating monarchs and just sort of the sort of the shoulder seasons for um, for Lepidoptera and other pollinators and um, I don't know keeping keeping the early season and the late season and the middle season like they all sort of serve a purpose in the life cycle of these things so I just wanted to reiterate that as something that we should think about and I'm all for doing some site visits um, when we when we get into this one. Yeah. And as you know, Michelle, the challenge will be when you start layering this all down, you are shrinking the management uh, season, if you will, tremendously. So, you know, it's, it's hard even, even getting in in the spring, you know, rain is such a big factor and actual the, you know, the physical the physical condition of a field. And so many of these fields are, you know, they were marginal, marginal agricultural areas anyway. So many of our conservation areas were formerly dairy farms, which don't have really high producing soils anyway. And they're often very wet. They were pasture land for all the dairies we had in Amherst. So getting in earlier before say migrating birds, you know, come back, et cetera. So we just have to be cognizant of, of that shrinking window of management time if we really want to keep early successional fields uh, in play. You happy with the answer so far, Bruce? Yeah, very interesting, sir. But Thanks. all good. I agree with Michelle. We, you know, and, and we've gotten dinged before. I mean, there's been a number of people who've been 
concerned about mowing we've done at uh, Amethyst Brook, for instance, is such a high profile area. Um, but again, I think many people don't realize if you just let it go in a few years, you won't have some of those pollinator species like like milkweed and and other early early successional species and then the woodies will out compete yeah. that's happening at atkins flats as we speak you know we're, we're seeing fewer and fewer bobolinks there and meadowlarks because you're getting a lot of woodies in there woody vegetation so moving past bruce's questions um or this question are there other questions bruce you want to quickly go over no, I'm I'm content with the answers Dave gave, and I think we all should think about how to incorporate them if we need to in the policy document. This is more about the implementation of the policy. Okay. So, Dave, while you were gone, we talked about uh, where we are. Our charter runs out at the end of this month, and her Aaron's been good at pushing us towards the finish line. Um, but I think. And I think we think that we need an extension. For one, we were canceled um, for various reasons. I don't know how many times, half a dozen. So there was a chunk of time. Agriculture took close to six months off and on. Um, so it's not like we've been toddling. <clears throat> but uh, I think we have good reason to ask for an extension. And we mentioned six months. So we have some big issues to go over. Um, we've got a bunch that are pretty much done, but we've got to cover dogs, for example, which will take a while. There's some other topics that are hot. So what we planned to do while you were off, or maybe you weren't, but so if you've heard this, tell me and we'll, we'll just move on. But we've now, with Michelle on the phone, okayed, putting subcommittee on the agenda early for the purpose of handing out um, the agricultural policy without explanation, but just to the commission as a whole for them to look at and planning a meeting, either part of a regular commission meeting or a, com or a meeting all to itself to discuss agriculture and get some feedback and probably also direct comments to Bruce that commissioners may have. Um, so in handing that out without discussion, uh, at the same, in the same breath, as for an extension without much discussion, uh, we, can, we can mention some of the reasons for that, but I think the commission would be hard pressed to say, no, you've had enough time. <laughs> I think, we have three of the votes needed. <laughs> to I, get think, I think the commission would be graceful enough to uh, to join to grant us a, a few more months, and um, six months seems reasonable given that people have things to do during the summer, and we have some hot issues still to cover. Mm -hmm. so it might also be sounds good. It might also be a good time to update um, Rachel, who hasn't, you know, she's a new member who might be interested in participating and or not know, doesn't know the charge of the commission of, of the subcommittee. Yeah. Um, I would, I, before we invite Rachel, I would like to have a discussion amongst the present members and whether or not an additional member would be useful um, or whether just continue with the conversation as we have, it doesn't make any difference to me, but I would like to hear from the other members about a new member before Aaron volunteers it. I'd be concerned that the, the onboarding and the up, up getting her up to speed would just take too, too much extra time or too close to the end. Um, I, I see your point in that, um, I mean, everybody will have a chance to review the document and discuss it. So it's not like she wouldn't participate necessarily. I wasn't, I wasn't meaning that she joined the committee, just that she might oh. be interested in participating or she understanding. She might want to sit in. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, these are open meetings, and she's a member of the commission. That's Anybody a good point. can join us. Yeah, that's a good one. Anybody okay. can join us. So I'm trying to keep a limited amount of time to the subcommittee in an, an agenda which may be full. I don't know what's on it. So. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have, we will end in 12 minutes. And I need to leave in five, so. You want to quickly bring up the rules and regulations, Aaron? Shell. Um, yeah, I, I had a comment if that could be quick if we want to just knock something off. Um, but I don't. If you wanted to start with number one, that's fine too. Go ahead. Um, so my comment is down in the forest management section, if that's appropriate to bring up. Um, I was, it's good to revisit this after a, a period of time. Um, so specifically the carbon credit, um, it's, let me see. So I just want to make sure I'm, the rules and regulations aren't that's a whole different section of the of the document okay. um so i'm just looking so, and fine sorry like room never mind then yeah the the forest management sections uh, just another section of the document so i just want to make sure that's clear well if you michelle if you've got a quick question and it's on your mind let's bring it up quickly um, just, well for the general rules and regulations this is where like dog walking is didn't we have something about no commercial or professional dog walking and i didn't see that in it mm. I, I know we discussed it and no. am i missing it or am i looking at the wrong version i'm not sure how you know, um Dave brought that up and about the woman coming down from Brattleboro. It's not just her. I mean, yeah, it's, it's it multiple Redmore. people. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's getting more and more common. Yeah. Is that, is that an issue worth, I mean, is it so common that it's interfering with other people's use? Absolutely. Yeah. I've heard feedback just from oh. people about yeah. it. Uh, it's not Aaron, it's number 17. Right there. Already? That's just dog handlers. That just means. So there's nothing in there about. No. Okay. I don't know how to. I don't know what the words are to say, but I I feel like. Well, well, why don't we just make a note that it needs to get added and worry about the words. Okay. And I'd be happy to. Uh, I'd be happy to draft something. Yeah, and honestly, like no one's gonna read this, so unless it's signed, uh, right. <laughs> so yeah. th this is just a thought that um we might need to check the rest of the document because it might fall fall under something that would qualify for a land um land use application. You know, similar to like somebody having a camp on a conservation land or something like that, where you know there there's a commercial activity proposed. So um i'm just not sure if it's covered in another section so i want to double check that and i can follow up on that one just to see if we because i know i do remember we talked about it before so aaron do you want to take on the whole job oh, commercial ventures are prohibited i wonder if that's what it was yeah but we really specifically talked about the dog walking because it has mm -hmm. the nexus mm -hmm. of other issues okay okay yeah. i i guess aaron a quick response to your thought about whether this could be a permitted use i know my opinion is that we should not we should not channel these through an application to we should cover it here we should deal with okay. it here my professional opinion is that we should not allow commercial dog walkers um these businesses to operate on town conservation land and trails 
for two reasons. One is many times they are not on leash and they can't control five dogs or seven dogs or however many dogs they have. And I've seen them walk seven at a time. And two, there's no way they are picking up their feces. You just, it's not physically possible to do that. And those dogs off leash are interacting with bird, ground nesting birds, other people, other dogs, et cetera. So that's just my two cents. And I, I like Michelle, thought we kind of said no to these things. I agree with okay. Dave. I'll double check okay. and see if it was have to go. missed in so, another thanks, Bruce. iteration hey, Bruce. of this draft. So, so just to put a, a button on this before Bruce goes, uh, I think Bruce left. Um, where's the most appropriate place to say just no? I think it's 17, isn't it? Yeah. 17. Yeah, that's when begins. Dog must be in a leash. Well, how about if we make it all its own? Yeah, so it stands out. I like that. Okay. Um, do you want it under there. 17? Just Yeah, just make it its own number. Yeah, I like that. Okay, I had another quick one that we could do in five minutes. Um, sure. So this is in the forest management. And so this um, is about like no carbon um, credits and it's a sentence that we have. And I just, I wanted to revisit it because it's in there based on like very brief comments from commissioners previously. And I, I don't know that we want to outright prohibit it. I mean, it's a, it's a developing market. It's a developing science. It's, I, I just don't want to, you know, take it off the table specifically. Like there's definitely concerns about it. And so it warrants discussion, but I don't know that we need to just prohibit it based on the information that we've discussed, which is nothing. <laughs> and then we've really had no conversation around it, but that was just my idea. What would happen if we just took the sentence out? That's what I'm suggesting. And then if it comes up, then we discuss it in length later. So, so why, don't, why don't we make a note that it comes out? Can I, can I just, make a comment on that yeah. that was um so first off we did have a lengthy discussion about the forestry section which um alex i believe right um took care of i don't know that this version that we're looking at is the most up-to-date version because some of these the sections that were being worked on similar to agriculture were pulled out of the overall body of the document and edited in a separate document. So we're looking at rules and regulations in this one, because this was the most up-to-date version with rules and regs that I could find. But there may be other sections that have been updated that we need to integrate into this. So that's number one. And then number two is relative to the carbon credits, I think we should be very careful before we take that out, because there was a, a significant amount of research on my part that went into adding that. And there is a, a very um, uh, important rationale behind that so i just don't want to um i want to make sure that we don't like just glaze over it and take it out right now without discussing it in more depth there was a greater discussion that we already had as a subcommittee on that specific item and we went into some depth discussing it which was <laughs> i don't i don't really want to get into the depth of it right now but if you we want to reopen that discussion sure. um it'll be it'll happen after the extension okay <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Yeah, that'll be a good reminder because I'm kind of a little foggy on what we talked yeah, about. Yeah, I don't remember either. I just, I just, you did your research. That research was based probably in like 2023 or something. So if this is going to be like a 10 year document, it, it seems, I don't know. I, I just, it's so specific and so big of a topic that I think prohibiting it, um, I don't know. It could always just come to the commission. Like, yeah. Maybe maybe I we change that language that that carbon sequestration and credits uh, credits associated with carbon sequestration. I can't say it. Credits associated with carbon sequestration is an evolving fill in the blank, and um, um, then we need to put the qualifier past that on should be should be undertaken i don't even know what to say without serious consideration yeah i don't i don't think we should um 
without getting into a larger discussion about it, tackle it. I, there are a lot of um, uh, companies in other states who approach cities and towns um, on other, in other parts of the country. I know Fletcher was a person who contributed a lot to this discussion because he's um, familiar with this from a state perspective of, you know, the mass fish and wildlife side, but approach cities and towns and, and agencies to try to get carbon credits for properties that were already preserved, which means that they're basically taking carbon credits for land that was preserved 10 or 15 years ago in order to, um, for right. them to be able to cut down large forests in other parts of the country and justify it. And so um, there's, I'm just saying we need to be very cautious about how we go about doing it. It's not the same as we want to buy a piece of land right. here to preserve in exchange for this. They're going back in time to land that's already preserved to try to get credit for yeah. development I mean, that's I, happening. That was now. like a very yeah, brief I'm conversation. Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, but we're going to, with your permission, we'll move this conversation to later. We've got two minutes left. Okay. I just want to say there's multiple scenarios. That's one of them. And that's not a great one, but um, I just, I want to remember to come back to it is all because mm -hmm. it's going to be a while. Okay. Sure. We got less, less than one minute. So we did not talk about our next agenda. Um, maybe Aaron and I can talk about that offline, but um, we will so, end at 1230 and so that uh, Michelle can get back to work. So the next agenda is already posted because um, we had set the next three agendas. Um, so it's already posted with the clerk's office um, and posted on our website. Okay. Good. So right. we're going to hand out the agenda, the ag section at the next CONCOM meeting and ask for an extension of six months for good reason. Sounds good. On the 26th, though, not on the 12th, right? The, at the next CONCOM meeting. That's tomorrow. Yeah, I don't think we want to squeeze it into that one. The one after that. Yeah. Soon. Soon. Okay. Ah. Sounds good. Soon. Okay. Before the end of June. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. All right. Thank Bye. you, everybody. Bye.